everybody. Here we are. It is that time of year again to put our machines to bed for the winter. So what we're going to do today is we're going to walk everybody through how we at the Personal Watercraft Channel winterize our machines. So the GTX and the RXP, they're all done already. So today we're going to do the GTR 230, the 2021 GTR 230. So follow along. It's a pretty simple procedure. Get all the water out of it. Get some antifreeze in where water could still be. Um, get all that dirty, gross oil out of there. Get some nice, fresh oil on those bearings for the winter. Um, get some storage spray down into the cylinders. Uh, you know, it, it can sit for months. It could sit for years after we're done today. You know, I, I wouldn't have a problem after today letting machines sit for two, three years um, and, and the way we're going to do it today. So follow along. Everybody's been asking for it, so here it is. Okay, here's the supplies that we need. We've got some um, absolute zero biodegradable, um, safer for safer waterways, antifreeze. We've got an XPS 5W40. We got three and a half liters of that. That's what the 230 will take. We got some engine storage spray, so fogging oil, whatever you want to call, fuel stabilizer, and we have a new fuel filter. And don't forget, when you're doing the fuel filter, don't forget you want to do the O-rings on the cover as well. So we'll get into that when we actually get there. So here's the supplies that you need. Go shopping, boys and girls. All right, everybody. With the with the GTX 230 and the GTR 230, we have the um, seat platform and the Lynx cooler clip. So we got to take out all of these bolts. And don't forget... Don't forget the three under here. A lot of guys take it apart. Forget about these two, you have to jam it off. These ones here, there's a nut under these two front ones. It's a 10 mil nut. Um, be careful it doesn't drop in the hall. I've dropped many in the hall already, so. So we get up under here. We get these, these bolts off. Okay, again, making sure we don't drop them. Washer nut, 10 mil nut. Okay guys, so now we're in the hall. We got that open. Opens right up when you with these GTXs and the GTRs. You can get right in here. It's not it's not too too bad what to do. So we're gonna start drawing out the fuel. We've warmed the engine. It's um the fuel or the oil comes out a lot easier when it's a little bit warm. So we've warmed the engine a little bit. So we're gonna pull, we're gonna start pulling that oil out now, and then we'll pull the, the oil filter and get a new filter in it before we put it away. So okay, so we got our pump set up. It's a vacuum pump, it's gonna draw out the oil. Again, warm oil comes out a little quicker than cold oil. So we're gonna take our hose, we're gonna fish her down right in the dipstick tube until we hit the bottom. Until we feel that bottom right there. And then we'll pull it up just a little tiny bit. And we'll start drawing. Takes a while. Nice. This is a bit of a recipe of patience. You gotta have a lot of patience to do this. It takes a while, guys. It doesn't come out of there all in one shot. So probably takes about 20 minutes to draw it all out. Okay, so we'll get this oil filter out of here. It's an eight mil, okay? <laughs> Let's see how dirty this thing is. How many hours are on this thing? 
35 hours. Let's see what oil, how dirty this thing is after 35 hours. There we go. Doesn't look too bad. I don't see any I don't see anything that's not supposed to be in there in there that's good no no aluminum or anything so that's good and as we're pulling some oil we'll, we'll draw some of this oil out of here as well try to get as much dirty oil out of this thing as we can anyway like the bottom of a rum and coke. Bottle of a rum and coke? Just like the bottom of a rum and coke, yeah. <laughs> like the dentist. <laughs> it's 40 hours on it. 40? Is that we're at 40 hours? Okay, we're just trying to get as much dirty out of the oil out of there as we can. You don't want this oil sitting in your machine for the winter. It's got carbon in there and carbon's acidic -y and you don't know what's going to happen. Maybe this thing's going to have to sit for a year. You don't know. Maybe you'll break your leg over the winter and won't be able to see you. So when we're done with this machine, it can easily sit for a year or two. I think I'd still see you with a cast on. Yeah, I think so too, but you never know. So you don't want this dirty oil sitting in your machine all winter long. It's just too hard on bearings and stuff. So lots of different opinions on Facebook or, or different channels on what you should do but I like to get the oil out of them get nice fresh clean oil in there so okay so let's replace these o-rings since we have the o-rings right here in the bag where we once they're squished they ain't coming back so we'll get these out of here Got a couple new fresh ones in there you buy the kit from your your local sea dew dealer you will uh this comes in the kit so pretty straightforward so you will put the big one on first easier so the big one goes on first for the closest one to the bottom and then we'll put this one on over top yes pretty easy to do Okay, and then we will find a little tiny bit of oil. Just put a little bit of oil on these O-rings just so they sit nice and tight. And we'll, we'll get the filter on there, just like that. And that's ready to go in when we get all our oil out. Okay, so while we wait for this to draw its oil, because as I said, it takes a while, we're just gonna come through here with a screwdriver. We're just gonna check, we're gonna check hose fittings, make sure everything's tight. So then pretty much we just add water in the spring. We'll add water in the spring just to make sure that everything is safe and sound. You get one of these these cooling lines for your exhaust come off and you are going to sink. So, quick check. Mm -hmm. Anyway, tighten up hose clamps, tighten up whatever you can get your, you can reach without too much difficulty, but just check them all, make sure they're tight. Now it's a good opportunity to, if you were to take it to a dealer, you would hope that they do this type of maintenance for you. But we're making this video so you don't have to go to your dealer, right? So while we wait for that oil to draw, as I said, it takes forever. Um, bought this handy little fitting little hose on Amazon for like 29 bucks delivered to my house. Can't go wrong for that. You'll have it forever. Um, we're going we're gonna to thread that thing right in here, right in the, right in the hose inlet. Okay. 
I've got my compressor set to 55 PSI. We're going to blow the water out of this thing. Because the last thing you want is any water sitting in that exhaust. If it's going to be in the cold, it's going to freeze. It will freeze your water box. So we're just going to give it a little bit of air here, nice and slow. And if you look at the water that's coming, was coming out from underneath there, all that water there, well, it's stopped now, but you put my compressor kit on, that's all water that's going to freeze. Okay, so we're going to make it really easy and simple. We're going to take our biodegradable RV antifreeze, because at some point in time, this is probably going to end up in a lake. We're just going to fill up. We're going to get as much in there as we can. Not easy. That's going to displace any little bits of water that are left in that exhaust that we didn't quite, we didn't quite get. See what I did that? Pretty simple. Just stuck my thing on there. And we're going to inject that in there with some air. Just a little bit of air though, we don't want to... We're going to do it twice. Just to be sure that we got enough antifreeze in there. little thing. $29 on Amazon. You'll have it forever. So we'll push that in there. That's probably going to be enough antifreeze in the exhaust system. Displace any water. Get a couple dribbles of antifreeze coming out the bottom. We're good. Okay. While this oil is still pulling, we are going to, we're going to get these coils out of here. So we can get the spark plugs out and we can get some fog and oil in there. How's that sound? Don't drop the screws in the hall. They're stainless steel. Can't even pick them up with a magnet, so be very careful. Done it. Okay. We're gonna release the I'm gonna pop in here. We're gonna release the clip on the um, on the on the coil and just push it up and out of the way. And we're gonna slowly work these coils up because the bottom rubbers will leave, stay on the spark plug if you get too aggressive. And then you got a whole thing. So we got them both. One, two. Sometimes that one will stay on there. All right. It almost seems like this last one's a tough one. This front, this front coil is a tough one to get off the spark plug. It wants to stick the most, but there we go. I put them in order, just so that when I put them back in, they're uh, we get them front to back, front to back. So um, don't know if it matters, but. Look at that. We're getting air on that oil. That's good. So make sure you get down on that spark plug nice and tight. They shouldn't be too bad. Hmm. Good spark plug wrench has a rubber grommet in there to grab the spark plug and pull it up out of that sleeve. Look at that. We'll have a look at it. That looks pretty good. I see it's only got 40 hours on it. Okay, so we got our coils out. We got our spark plugs out. We kept them in order. Um, we've got no oil on the bottom of the, the valve cover tubes. That's a good thing. So now we're going to get our trusty engine foggy spray. And we're going to get a good helping of oil in each one of those cylinders, so if any moisture seeps into this engine this winter, be it from a barn or wherever you got it stored, we won't get any corrosion on that cylinder wall. So do yourself a favor, hold the tube, don't let it fall on your motor. Then you've got a real world of hurt on your hands. 
So we'll get a help in oil in there. Each one of those. That's all you need. We got a good help in oil down in there. So once we get these plugs back in, we'll put it in drowned mode. I don't know if you know what drowned mode is, but drowned mode is a feature that CDU has put on their machines that if you hold that throttle wide open and you start cranking, it's not going to give it fuel and it's not going to give a spark. It's going to turn over. That's if you sink it, you can get the water out of it. You'll see drowned mode come across the dashboard. Um, so when we crank it over, we're going to crank it over without firing it to push some oil out of that sump and put more oil into the pan to get more oil out of it. Do not fire your machine with no oil in it. I seen a video, a guy was actually starting his machine without oil in it. Don't do that. Okay, we'll get these plugs back in there, just in the order they come out. Just make sure you don't cross thread, be very careful. Make sure if you can't put it in with your fingers until the um, washer bottoms out, you haven't done it right. So there's one, if, you, if it's tough to thread, you've cross threaded it, and then you're into a world of hurt. So, get those in there. There we go. <laughs> Fun. It's raining outside. It's just not snowing. Okay. So, Bombard or PRP recommends that you you snug them up and then you turn a quarter of a turn. I think that's too much. I go an eighth of a turn, quarter of a turn. I'm not sure exactly. Couldn't find a torque spec on it. Didn't dig that hard, but a good eighth of a turn is more than enough. The quarter of a turn of the brand new spark plug in the in the washer hasn't been seated yet, but an eighth of a turn is more than enough. You start cranking those on there and they get a little corrosion and they get stuck in there, you'll bust one off. Okay, so now, We'll get back in here, get our coils back in. A little lith lithium grease if I had it wouldn't hurt. A little lithium, lith lithium grease there, a little lithium grease there. I don't have any, but I would do it. Okay. A little bit of a tight squeeze there for that first one. Till it clicks. Here we go. That easy. Just till it clicks. And then the last one. And click. There we go. Okay, our stainless steel screws. Don't drop them. If you drop them, don't say I didn't warn you. Go put the ground strap on. Make sure you get your ground strap in there. Okay, ground strap. Oh. Ground strap. Awesome. Okay, there you go. We'll tighten those up now. So now that we have those done going to do. We're going to put this in the drown mode and we're going to crank it over. Okay. So if you take your throttle, well, low fuel. Good idea to put them away full too, just so you know. Wide open throttle. Crank it. We're, when we're cranking it, what's going to happen is we're going to distribute that oil around that cylinder and we're going to coat the top of the piston, the cylinder head, the cylinder walls and everything with that nice fogging oil. No corrosion in there. So. Watch this dashboard. It'll come up drown mode. See that? Drown mode. One more time. That's all we gotta do. So by doing that, that is now taking some oil in the back of the motor and put it back in the sump. So we're gonna see if we can draw some more oil out of this thing. Some more. Okay. Get 
more well out of here. There, it's uh, sucking air again, just like that. What'd you say, rum and coke? Yeah, just like the bottom of the glass of a rum and coke. So we're gonna put her into drown mode one more time. See if we can kick some more oil up into that sump. So again, guys, full throttle, full fuel. We're not gonna get much more oil than that. There's no way to get it all. You certainly can get a your fair share this way. Um, there's no drain plug on them. You don't want to drain it in, a, even if there was. But uh, so yeah, that's about all we're gonna get out of it. So what I like to do is I like to we'll get our three and a half liters in there, and then our three we'll put three and a quarter in, and then after our first ride of the season at the in the spring we'll just check the oil and then top it up if we have to. Worst thing you can do with these machines is put too much oil up, slows you right down. You lose a lot of horsepower by having too much oil in there. Okay, so our oil filter is ready. Got it put back together. I'm gonna make sure this is clean. I see some stuff on there, so I'm going to re-oil this. A little bit of oil right from here. And get some oil there. And then we'll drop her in. It's that simple. Have our 10 mil socket, or sorry, our 8 mil socket. Again, make sure it's not cross threaded. Make sure it bites. It. There we go. I'll put the torque specs up on the bottom of the screen here. Are you seeing in here? Okay, get our support torque specs up there. Nothing got caught in there when we closed that down, and we're good to go. Okay, so now that I got it open and before I put my oil in it, I'm gonna grab a little bit of silicone spray. And we're just gonna give it a bit of a silicone spray just to just to coat stuff up, just so we don't get our plugs and our wires and our fittings and what we can get. Not perfect science by any means, but it'll dry up. You won't even know it's in there in a little bit. But it certainly doesn't hurt to give it a little bit of corrosion protection for the winter. And again, plugs and wires keep the water out of it. Maybe a CD, but they don't like getting wet. Okay, that'll work. Let's get some oil in it. Three and a half liters. So again, we're gonna put three and a, three and a quarter liters into it, and um, and then in the spring, after our first ride, we'll uh, we'll check that oil and make sure we get it right on. Okay. We got our XPS 5W40 SAE 5W40 synthetic blend, um, bought from the dealer. Can't say we're not using the right oil when we're buying it from the dealer. Everybody else, you might have different recommendations for your oil. Some people actually put um, sacrificial oil in. So they'll put oil in, they'll drain the oil, they'll fill it up with sacrificial oil, run it, shut it down, drain that oil out, and put the good stuff in. So they're getting a good clean, but uh, maybe a bit of oil would kill. Okay. So we'll get this oil in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's three. We'll get our we'll get our half liter that's in the the bomb the BRP kit, and we'll uh, put about half of it in, and we'll save the rest for the spring so we get the right amount of oil in. Uh, okay. Okay, so we got three and a quarter liters of oil in it now. New oil filter. We're gonna keep it in drown mode because we don't want it to fire. We don't want it to burn up all that. Um, fogging oil we put in so 
we're just going to crank it over again and uh, we'll get that oil moving around we'll crank it in oil in in ground mode and we'll move that new oil around the motor outside in the cold now. Okay. Get this back in here. There we go. We've left the, ba we left the battery in this one. We're going to, we have access to this over the winter, so we're just going to throw it on a battery charger a couple times over the winter. I don't generally take the batteries out. I don't, not a fan of tenders. I would much rather just charge my battery for 12 hours twice during the winter and once just before we go riding for the first time, they'll be fine. Tenders tend to overcharge. Just saying, you guys can fight about that one online if you want, but tenders tend to overcharge. So we'll get all these bolts back in here. We'll just start them, make sure they're biting. These things will pop through and fall into the hall if you're going to get too crazy on them. So be patient with these. I'm thinking that BRP could have come up with a better way to access the back half of these engines, but hmm, follow on. Okay, I'm using my drill for this. Just don't, just don't drive them home. Sure. This is the fun part. You gotta get the washer and the nut on the back side of this. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. We have all dropped stuff in the hall. I dropped a fuel injector in the hall once I had to pull the engine out and get it. I may have sworn a couple of times on that one. Yeah, I, yeah, I may have dropped enough bomber too. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. It's probably full. Okay, there we go. There's that one. Get our trusty little wrench on here. Again, don't kill them guys. You don't have to kill them. They're only going into plow. Well, these are going into nuts, but the other ones are going just going into plastic clips. Alright, so that pretty much wraps it up guys. Um, do yourself a favor. Pick up some of those clips that these screws, these bolts go into. Pick up some of the darts that hold on the, they're called darts, that hold on some of the plastic trim. Have them in your tool kits, have them at home. They break, they get lost. These, I'm surprised we got through it without losing some of these plastic clips underneath. Um, so this machine is pretty much done now for the winter and I'd be fine leaving it for two years, the way it sits right now. So thanks for coming along, I hope I helped out. Um, been a good summer for the Personal Watercraft Channel. Thanks for coming along, guys. Any comments and, you know, if you guys got a better way of doing things, feel free to comment. But we'll see you on the water in the spring when the ice goes away. Have a good winter, guys.